Um, I'm going to move straight on to our featured guest for tonight. Uh, Adam, I have really wanted to been talking to you for a while. I've been following you all along. Um, if you can unmute your um, mic there, I'm going to bring you up. Aloha. Thanks for having me, Jeff. So you, dude. All right. So first of all, you are, are from Queens, New York. So you're up there. Um, you've got a few tiki outlets in the area. Yeah, yeah. Well, the funny story is I've, I've, so I've lived in New York for 10 years and uh, been in, or about 11 years now, been in Queens for 10. And uh, yeah, we, we don't have a lot of tiki bars out here. I'm actually originally from Southern California and they've just got an, an embarrassment of riches in tiki bars out there. So, yes. so uh, you know, go figure that I would have moved from tiki capital to, to out here, but that's another story. <laughs> well, I, um, as somebody who moved from Southern California to Indianapolis, Indiana, I feel your pain. <laughs> right, right. Yes. Gone from, from there's a tiki bar in every corner to um, what's tiki. <laughs> yeah. Well, luckily, you got a real legit tiki bar out there that just is amazing. So, yes, we do. And, and actually, yeah. I've discovered we have three. So, yeah, pretty yes, excited yes. about that. A couple that so, we didn't hit. So, all right. So, you decided. Um, tell us a story of how you made this decision to go on this journey. And was it like a lifelong dream? What, what prompted it? Uh, well, it, it, it was not impromptu. It had kind of been coming for a while, uh, but it was sort of a mix of, um, you know, when my wife and I moved out here to be actors, you know, way back in the day, um, she had just graduated and we, we, she hadn't really been any further. She's also from Southern California. We met in theater. She hadn't been any further East than, than Las Vegas or Grand Canyon, you know, with family trips. So she uh, was um, really contemplating, you know, how should we move? Should we just fly and send our stuff? And, and I said, no, absolutely not. I grew up taking road trips. My, my family, my mom's family is all from Michigan and uh, we would go back quite a bit during the summer. So we, we took like a month. I convinced her, let's just drive and let's see the country. If you've never done it before, you, you got to try it. So we spent like a month on the road. Uh, very similarly, I wasn't bartending back then. I, I, I had been in hospitality for, you know, over 10 years already, but I hadn't gotten behind a bar. So the, the bar scene was elusive to me. Um, but I had always wanted to kind of stop on these road trips back east when I was growing up uh, to see things and we didn't really do any of that we didn't we didn't uh, stop and look at the national parks or or landmarks and so she and I did that 10 years ago and we we just got this great sense of of wanderlust that never really left and we said you know because it felt weird when we got to New York we landed and we we were like well well now what this is we're home this is our new home I mean it's it feels weird that we're not moving on so that kind of always implanted in our head, you know, we're, we're going to have to do that again one of these days and we'll take twice as long. We'll do it, you know, we'll do it all out and we'll hit, you know, we'll hit our favorite spots again, but we'll add some stops. Uh, and so that was kind of the impetus for the trip initially, but to kind of sweeten the deal, I, I said, you know, maybe we can go to a few cities along the way too. And, and not that we didn't do that before, but now I've been bartending since I got here to New York and as a means to an end as an actor, you know, you get behind a bar to, to earn a living. And um, yeah. so I found tiki drinks along the way and that led me into the whole rabbit hole of tiki. And I just felt like, you know, I've been into tiki for about seven years now, pretty hardcore, which is not a long time. A lot of people have been doing it for, you know, even when it really wasn't a big mainstream thing, like it's coming now. Um, and so it was a new thing to me. And as I kept discovering it, I was like, well, yeah, I got to, I got to visit these bars. And so I would check out the New York scene. I've been to the Maikai a few times, you know, very East coast to go down to Florida where it's warm during the winter. And uh, so we got to experience some, some nice bars, but I always, and we would have this huge tiki bar at our house. I kind of started getting a reputation here in New York for having these huge, I mean, we live in a one bedroom apartment in Queens. And we'd have parties with like 80 guests in our apartment. It, it just felt like a swamp in here. Um, so yeah, but but in spite of all that, I felt kind of like a, a little bit of a, a tiki fraud. I'm like, I've been really into tiki and I consider myself a bit of an authority on it now, but I've not really been to a lot of these tiki bars. So I didn't want to be a poser. And I said, we're going to have to remedy that. So let's, let's hit some tiki bars along the way while we're camping. And that ended up taking over and becoming the, the main theme of the trip. Um, you know, I just laid out a list of 80 initially, 80 that I thought would be possible in the, basically the trajectory that we were going to be on. 
Uh, we could probably do this in, uh, in 11 weeks. That's what I thought. In the end, we ended up hitting 70 in 12 weeks. So pretty good. We, we came close. <laughs> <laughs> 70 bars in three months. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I don't see your wife here. Is she still with you? She's actually, um, she's doing some work in the other room. Um, okay. The, I just wanted to make sure she hasn't left, nor did you bury the body somewhere. Oh, no, no. <laughs> she's, okay. she is still, she's still with me. And we're, we're excited to plan a second leg actually down to Florida. Uh, cause we did not hit the Mai Kai. It was closed. Um, and we were actually very fortunate that we were able to hit as many as we were because things had reopened. Um, a lot of the things that we missed were of course, because closures and, um, hours of operations had changed. So it was sad to not hit the Maikai, but it gave us a reason to plan a second trip um, when that reopens finally. And uh, we'll, we'll hit all the stuff in Florida that we can and, and a few spots we missed in the South. So that's that's pretty incredible. I mean, you've seen the, the big broad range of tiki bars and what is a tiki bar from, because I assume you hit the, the legit well, you didn't weren't able to hit the Mai Kai, but I, I saw you hit some of the legit up in Northern California and whatnot. What yeah. would be the one that was the most not most of a stretch to say, okay, yes, this is a tiki bar. I'll check the box. Did you hit any of those kind? Oh, definitely, definitely. And and to your point, there there. I mean, that was one of the fun things about the trip was just the interpretation of tiki that people have. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of purists will would would scoff at calling some of these tiki bars, but uh, you know, a lot of places do tiki very well, and so we I kind of considered that when making the list. Um, to answer your question, one one bar in particular that wouldn't, I mean, there are some that would not call themselves tiki bars, but they like tiki and they know it well and they do it they execute it pretty mm -hmm. well. Um, rumba up in Seattle is more of a rum bar, I and mean, they have a ridiculous selection yeah. of rum. It doesn't look anything like. A tiki bar. It's more of a Hemingway bar, you know, very much like if you've been, it, it looks uh, very much like a, um, a bar that Hemingway would, Hemingway would have frequented uh, a lot. Um, you know, sailfish on the wall and lots of postcards everywhere and very little like greenery and no tikis to speak of. It's a beautiful bar, very sunlit, but they make really good cocktails and they just happen to be uh, the gateway into a bar that also is not calling itself tiki, but it's pretty much tiki, which is Inside Passage. Uh, and that's that's a Notch Gonzalez designed bar uh, owned by the same people. It's very it's very much more like speakeasy because there's no there's no window to the outside world. You're you're very much in this this environment and it's more of an escapist bar, uh, but you have to go through Roomba to get it. So it's kind of a twofer spot. Nice. And, yeah, it just made sense to do that. But there were others that were like that. Pearl Diver, same thing, very mid-century. But you name yourself after a tiki drink, you would expect to be able to get decent tiki drinks there. So, uh, yeah, they did a they did a great job. Um, they make a vegan pearl diver with with uh, without actual butter, and it, I was surprised by how good it was. And which city was Pearl Diver in? Uh, that's in Nashville. Oh, Nashville, the one in Tennessee, not the one in yeah. Indiana that I was talking about. That's right, right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> good uh, full circle there. <laughs> yeah. So when you're, it's just crazy to me because I've been to a lot of different tiki bars, um, not in that kind of um, condensed time frame though. Yeah. Um, so what was that experience like? I mean, you, you know, 70 bars in, what is that? Um, 84 nights, 90, 90, not even 90. Yeah. About 90 nights. Yeah. Um, and, and time off for camping. I mean, we were a couple whole weeks where we were just off the grid. Um, but yeah, you know, it's kind of like doing, it's kind of like doing an extreme tasting, like a, a wine, you know, going to a winery or something you're, you're, you're learning, you get a pretty, I, I really want, just did this because I wanted to give myself a crash course in what, you know, in tiki bars, um, my friend Stoddard, he's a friend of mine. He's on the, the call now. He's, uh, he said, you kind of gave yourself you mean our musical guest for this evening. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. yeah. 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 I asked him to tune in. It's, he's just happens to be sitting at his keyboard. Thanks, Doug. Um, But he he made an astute observation that it, it's it's kind of like getting a degree in, in in tiki bars if there is such a thing because street cred and and actual experience accounts for something. And again, I hadn't been to so many of these, even coming from Southern California, never having. I was embarrassed to say I'd never been to the Tiki Tea. 
I was embarrassed to say I'd never been to Tonga Hut or out to the reef or, um, or even, you know, San Francisco, which is the tiki capital of the world. I mean, there are arguably the more tiki bars there than anywhere else. Oh yeah. Place, and, um, all of California. I mean, there's like over 40 just in California alone. I mean, no other state can compare and I'm from there. And so I hadn't really experienced any of these when we would, you know, again, we've lived here for 11 years. We've been back to California here and there to visit, but there's never time to get away. You know, I'm, we're from Riverside, which is an hour inside of LA. So we never really made the chance, the, the time to drive out and, and explore. So um, getting, getting to see these all close together uh, really helped develop my sense of like what what good tiki is, what a, a real tiki bar is, uh, the, the classic sense and kind of the direction that it's moving as well. I mean, I, I definitely think in the new, in the Renaissance era of tiki, the revival and how it's kind of poking its head into mainstream in a lot of ways, that there is room for both classic and the sort of uh, modern uh, variety. Um, and uh, And also what how cocktails are evolving in tiki um and it was fun to see a lot of bars some places uh that are newer but skew a bit toward the classic look and flavor profile uh kind of make their drinks accordingly and there are some places um that are a little bit more swanky like a three dots and a dash that have a uh, very forward thinking mentality about their cocktails but they're still very much tiki drinks and they're delicious. I mean, they were among our favorites. Last Rites in San Francisco, um, they they did some things that were really surprising to me that I, I, Undertow in Phoenix, same thing, very good solid cocktail programs, but you know, nice, um, nice escapist bars as well. So out of all of that experience, what would you say, what, what was your favorite cocktail and from, from which bar? Do you have one? Um, well, I have a few. One, I really, there was a zombie variation that had guava in it at Undertow that I remember when I tried it, I was like, this has got to be my favorite so far. It's just delicious. It was, it was great. It was very balanced, uh, like a guava zombie. Um, it was really cool. And, um, and the, another one that I really liked, uh, again, th these two places in particular, uh, Undertow and um, Last Rites in San Fran, just blew us away with the cocktail programs. The, the drinks at Last Rites are less, less uh, classic tiki. They're definitely, they're definitely drawing on the, the tropical um, profile and, uh, you know, and they use a few tiki tricks. I have one drink I had in particular was called a, uh, a zombie killer, which oddly enough was a, a zombie painkiller mashup, but it, it totally worked. And oh, it definitely wow. tasted like a hybrid of the two. And I thought that was delicious. Um, but the drink that really blew us away there, because I'm a mixologist here in New York, I, I you know, I bartend, I work at Sunken Harbor Club, I, I, you know, I try to be creative and put together weird, unique profiles, but they were doing things I wouldn't have thought of, like, um, they had one drink with, it had watermelon, it was gin and pisco, I think, and it had watermelon, um, marshmallow, heavy cream, vanilla, like, just really weird stuff, and it worked. Wow. It was really great. I got to tell you, that's being adventurous, man. Just right. listing off those ingredients. It's like, um, yeah, <laughs> although none of those go together. <laughs> yeah. And you, and you might not want to try it, but you're curious when you see that on the menu. <laughs> I, I had that when I had the Skittles at a, a, one of the bars there in New York, Skittles in the cocktail. It was like, oh, yes. The, the Taste the Rainbow from Mother of Pearl. That was yes. a delicious. Yeah. I really that, was, that. that was really super sweet. In case it's you very, figure that tastes out. like candy. It tastes like candy. yeah yeah so we're going <laughs> so did you make it out to um uh the what was the the mermaid bar in montana the, the name just skipped sip, right up my head sip and dip we sip didn't dip. Go, yeah that's way up there i you know i was looking at stuff and i thought yeah, that's a very unique experience that i i'm hoping to have someday i i that's a really that one was pretty out of the way so we didn't because it would have been basically only for that right um, Anything that was, I mean, that's a good, that's a good question because that was, that really kind of, we zigzagged a lot and we would backtrack a little. We would allow for some of that. Like we went, we wanted to hit a few of the uh, parks, the national parks in Utah. So we, there, there aren't really any great tiki bars in Utah, so to speak. There's some awesome home tiki bars that I'm aware of. Uh, and there's a gay tiki bar there called Waikiki, but 
my family, my parents were, or my uh, in-laws were in tow and the family just wasn't going to go do that. So we <laughs> skipped Utah and we made an, uh, we made an allowance to go backtrack a little bit up to Boise because there was a new, newish bar called Devil's Den. Oh um, yeah. What did you think of Devil's Den? Devil's Den was, was good. There were a couple drinks that I, I liked, um, a little light on the Tiki decor, but I think they were, um, I think they're kind of feeling out the audience because right. to my knowledge, I mean, when is the last time Boise, if ever, has had a tiki bar? I don't know. Sorry, Boise people, if, if you, <laughs> you have, you chime in. But I've I've never heard of Boise really being uh, a big tiki destination. So uh, they're probably feeling that out a little bit. It used to be a ramen shop. Right. Uh, and you can ramen, still- Ramen and ping pong. And ping pong. Yes, and so they- And then and you could, and they have a ping pong. No, they have a foosball table now. Um, which my father-in-law played with a stranger there and, and they, and you can still get the ramen. So they still have that in the back, but, um, yeah, you know, just interesting concept. Um, you know, I, good luck to them. I, I, I don't want to lose any of our tiki bars. So even if you're kind of flirting with tiki a little, I think it's a step in the right direction. So what would you say is the most remote one that you've got to, um, well, we had tried to go to Lava and Tonic in, in Wichita, um, but based on the time that we were coming through, they were closed. I'd say relevant to that would be uh, the Saturn Room just before that. Um, but Tulsa is a pretty, you know, it's a, it's a legit city. So it, it, around it, there isn't a lot going on, but, but Tulsa is a legit city. I'd say the bar that felt like it was the most in the middle of nowhere, there were two really, and they were both in residential neighborhoods. Forbidden Island in Alameda is just mm -hmm. weird because everything else around, there are no businesses anywhere. It looks like, like on either side of it are people's houses. Right. It's really strange that just the neighborhood that it's planted in. Um, but it's a fixture of that neighborhood. Like it's a staple of Alameda. It was, it was very weird to roll up there and see that this is not, this is like, <laughs> um, yeah, it was crazy. And then, and the other place that had a very similar vibe was the Halakahiki in um, River Grove, Illinois, mm -hmm. um, which is about an hour from Chicago. And that same thing, it was very much like kind of out in the boonies. There were some, there was some business nearby, but um, it felt like, it felt like very like small town in a way. I don't know. Yeah. But, and they've, they've got some legit um, decor in there with the Whitco carvings oh, that they've got. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the largest Whitco collection I think it surpasses the jungle room at uh, Graceland. It just had uh, just a, a, a plethora of Whitco. So what, <laughs> what would you say has been the, was the, the, your favorite bar decor wise? And is there anything that stuck out to you as this is the coolest thing I saw on the trip in the Tiki bar? Oh yeah. Um, that's a good question. And it's a good way to frame that because people have been wanting to know, you know, do you have a favorite or how would you rank them? Um, it, it's hard to say like, because best and favorite are two different things, right? Because there are things that I can say, uh, you know, not necessarily as impressive looking or as impressive tasting of a tiki bar, but you just have a really awesome experience. I, I mean, I would say the tiki tea is like that for me. That I just had, it was one of the best like tiki bar experiences of my life. It was just really, really wonderful. And I see why people love it so much because there's there's such a um and you can feel the love for that bar when you're there mm -hmm. and yeah. like regulars or strangers it doesn't matter like everybody they're there to party and they're having a good time and you're all close together and um and which seems a little uncomfortable now but <laughs> <laughs> it was great while we were there because everything well, was common well everybody has to be close together because that's probably the smallest tiki bar you've ever seen that's right. It was. It was. It's a, like the size of a shoebox. But we, yeah. we all we all crawled into it, and um, it was just so much fun. And I got to experience it through the eyes of uh, Adrian Ustakio, who does the um, Inside the Desert Oasis room, and his he's like family to them. So um, it, it was a real pleasure to go there. But uh, back to what you were asking in terms of the decor, uh, some places are really pulling out all the stops. I mean, Max is. If you haven't been to Max's South Seas Hideaway in Grand Rapids, Michigan, it is. I, I'm I was just flabbergasted by the the sheer volume of its collection, the yeah. amount of artwork on the walls by so many 
amazing artists in the community. Um, you know, people that have been doing it since the beginning and people that are um, a pretty big deal now, but have, you know, kind of just gotten into it a bit. Um, I mean, they have a little of everything there and it's three floors almost. And it's, it's really, really awesome. And they've got, they've got a lot of cool, just like walls, just panels of, of carved tiki's um, by a lot of different artists. Um, and I also really loved, and in that same area of the country, that the, the Inferno Room is fantastic. It's got this great mid-century vibe, but very sort of, you know, it's, it's very like kind of Hades in there. It's very red and sinister. And um, I am a huge fan, big, big sucker for, I was actually just reading today a, a post by Sven Kirsten about the importance of greenery in a tiki bar. And I, I, I saw that as well. Yeah, and and I I I haven't responded to it yet, but I couldn't agree more. To me, um, that that's the thing that really gets me into tiki are the natural elements. I I know people love like the masks and the weaponry and the carved idols and um, and things like that. That the sort of man made or tribal primitive look is very cool and it's probably the most important, most um, the most identifiable feature. The thing that really makes something unmistakably tiki, but the thing that's the most romantic and the most beautiful and whimsical and fantasy-like to me about a tiki bar are the natural elements. I got my waterfall going here. I got my big palm. I, I like feeling like maybe I'm having a drink in the jungle or in a rainforest canopy or something. Um, and so I, I really appreciated that the Inferno Room just has these ceiling high palm trees they, they, you know, they, they kind of scrape the rafters and they, they, they hug the, the main entrance when you come in. Um, yeah, very much like Rainforest Cafe. We got a comment here. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's funny because I, I got my start at Rainforest Cafe in this industry. I was a bus boy there for about a year at the Ontario Mills Mall in California. So uh, <laughs> that must have made an impression on me. I was going to say that must be where the tiki came from. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have memories from when I was a kid. Um, going to people's apartment complexes, you know, in the family and loving, loving that, you know, I was born in 1980. So uh, th at that time, there were still a lot of apartment buildings and complexes that had this, this uh, lots of ferns and waterfalls in the pool area, you know, down in the courtyard and just lots of colors and tropical gardens everywhere. And I, I have a fixed memory of, of seeing that and just thinking it was the most magical, amazing thing ever. Um, and I think I've always gravitated toward that look in life i guess I, I seek out the tropical most of my vacations are tropical i mean i love it so looking at at bars i mean when i go out of there i tend to look at okay how are the cocktails what is the decor look like mm -hmm. um, but one of the critical factors that can blow it because i've been to a, a couple of bars and i'm just like i, I can't deal with it um who who do you think was most on point music wise because that background music is a critical aspect. And, yeah. and if they crank, if they're playing Michael Jackson, it just killed everything else that they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, I mean, you just hit it right there. Those are the main three. It's a, like most people, I think, would agree that a, a, an authentic tiki bar needs three things. It needs to have tiki decor. First and foremost, for me, tiki decor. Because when I walk in, my, my sense of where I am should be altered and it should just be splashed on every nook and cranny of the place. Um, the more, the better for me. Uh, and then number two, of course, tiki drinks. Mm -hmm. And number three, which as you said, is a deal breaker for a lot of people, more, more than I think people realize that music is such a, um, a powerful um, factor in your sense of escape that if you're not playing something that's era appropriate, you know, it doesn't have to be exotica, but something that's at least on theme i mean even a little like some surf rock some some uh some caribbean steel drums or whatever you know it doesn't have to be polynesian sounding or faux polynesian music but uh it, most of the places were really good about that i i felt there were there were definitely some that were um yeah i was posting all along the way i i, I didn't expect to do this with with the tour but um it, it kind of took on a life of its own. And um, I started doing write-ups everywhere we went. And I did write about the music a few times, most notably though, when it was not good. <laughs> so if I didn't really comment on the music, I, I would assume uh, that either 
it wasn't offensive, so I didn't hear it through over the noise, uh, or or it was um, appropriate enough that it didn't bother me, and what maybe wasn't uh, worthy of note noting it. But um, a few places definitely didn't have that. Um, I'll say the grass skirt in San Diego was had very much a. There seemed to be this. I noticed people, a few people, not a lot. The place was pretty packed, and I saw a lot of people. Um, a few people dressed in like, you know, in like I was, you know, they didn't have silly hats on, but they were, they were dressed for the occasion. So they were definitely there to Tiki. They, they knew where they were and they were hoping mm -hmm. probably for the full experience or not, but there were definitely a lot of people who were not dressed that way. And they were dressed more like they were at a nightclub. And I think the music was really catering to those people. Um, and so it was interesting to see these, these types of crowds um, mingling together. Uh, just in booths right beside each other, you know, it's very, very interesting. Um, there were, yeah, there were a few places that were like that. Yeah. The, um, the, the one that always got me was the, uh, the adrift um, in Denver huh. and loved the place. Thought it was great decor. And the time I was there, I know they've been through some different drink, uh, some different mixologists, different managers of the, of the bar. Uh, but the time I was there, the drinks were on point. And it was beautiful. And they had this amazing mug. I'm going, I even went to the manager. I said, you've got it. You've got it all nailed. What the hell is this music? <laughs> and he says, well, we try and play reggae, but people didn't like reggae because they see it's not tiki. And I go, well, th but this it's isn't close. tiki. <laughs> yeah, it's a close. I mean, it's a step in the right direction, at least. It comes from an island. Well, and it comes from the same island that rum comes from, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's all in the family. Yeah. If it's not tiki, then how is rum tiki? I mean, yeah, it's funny. It's funny you'd say that because at a, I don't remember the music at Adrift. Um, I, I certainly didn't remark on it. What I did notice was that they were playing The Good Dinosaur by Pixar for this, I think, <laughs> on their pull down screen. So there might not have been any music playing um, <clears throat> because there were th these couple booths uh, across from the bar uh, full of kids. I think they were celebrating something and they had the good dinosaur on for them. Meanwhile, we're sitting at the bar top and our bartenders are blowing huge fireballs for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's like dra uh, uh, dragons and dragons. It's, it's, it's great. It yeah, was, I, I don't think I've ever tiki. seen that. <laughs> yeah, only at a tiki bar. It was perfect. So you mentioned uh, you got into doing some writing, and I think most of us have been following you along on this. So yeah. what what's in store? What are anything any plans to leverage what you just went through, creating any kind of content or? Yeah, yeah, we're uh, I'm compiling it all into a, a travel log, so a coffee table book, um, very visually oriented. Um, I mean, if I take basically what I did over the summer from my writings and and the posts that I was putting up a lot of it's already written i just have to clean it up a little uh choose the the photography wisely and uh, make it look pretty but um i'm also an illustrator so i'm going to do a lot of illustrations in it and uh, i want to i just i need to cushion it with some other content that i think is relevant um some of what we're talking about now for example like what is and isn't a tiki bar i think people would be interested in that so so yeah i'm in the process of putting that together right now and um I don't have uh, a, I don't have a time frame when it might be ready, but it's, it's, it's in the works. And I'm, well, I'm very going to expect excited. it within 12 weeks. I can tell you. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> if I could accomplish that, maybe I could do this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So one last question I got to ask. So you hit yeah. 70 plus tiki bars in that kind of time span. And then you walk back into the house. What did you say? Oh, I got to change this out because I saw something cool on the road. I had to bring and add it into my bar. What, what, what change, if any, did you make when you got back to your home bar? Uh, not really a lot. I, you know, <clears throat> people were asked if people have made comments along the way about, you know, the tiki mugs, like you must've had great restraint to not collect all these tiki mugs, but really it was, I mean, that's, that's an, that's an expense. I mean, we tiki people are collectors, so I can't get away from yeah. going on a trip like this and not collecting, but I tried to make it affordable for us. I collected a lot of lightweight paper goods like matchbooks and coasters and swizzle sticks and menus. Um, it was great being on the road and being able to have a lot of like menu choices because everything was scanned QR code. So 
right as we were hitting the road, I was starting to see that that was the, the, the physical hard copy menu was coming back. And that's a, that's a big thing for me in a tiki bar is being able to have that gorgeous, beautifully illustrated uh, menu with the art and the illustrations of the right. drinks. Um, so it was great to be able to have that. And that's mostly what I collected. I, I didn't, I didn't have room in the car nor the desire to weigh it down and lose gas mileage with all of our <laughs> tiki mugs. So, so we, we didn't really do a lot of that. Um, but I, the, the only bottle I'd say that I picked up along the way was um, at the time that I got it was not here in New York yet, but it is now at Aster. Uh, and that is the, the, um, the bums uh, zombie blend, um, which I picked up in Chicago. And I actually made a jet pilot with it. I haven't stirred it up yet. <laughs> I know it's supposed to be dry January, but I'm I'm having a damp January. I'm cutting back. But... <laughs> yeah, I would say you know after uh, after that many um, tiki bars in that short of time frame, and I'm just doing the math. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll do you know average of three cocktails. That's a lot of cocktails you had during that time frame. Yeah, and just for health purposes and for uh, you know budgetary purposes and time our time frame I and mean, we if we had multiple places to hit like we'd really only allow ourselves one drink right just say that we tried it and we can you know and if she got one too then we could try each other's drinks and then i got to really taste two drinks um to report on it but it, it was um yeah our our livers were pretty tired when we got home <laughs> and i've tried to dry i've tried to dry out a little bit when we first got back we did pretty good you know, oct sober, as they say, but that's such a fun time of year to drink when a lot of flavor, fall flavors are coming in. So I don't like doing it then. I prefer to do it in January, but um, I'm, I'm still developing recipes. Uh, the book uh, will have some recipes in it, so, uh, some of my own as well. So I'm still kind of fine tuning recipes. So I'm not going to be completely dry in January. I'll just, I'll, but I'll be damp. <laughs> yeah, dry-ish. Anyway, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining. And, and more importantly, thanks, Adam, for, for sharing that journey with us all along the way. My um, pleasure. If you, if you haven't had a chance to check out um, Adam's Instagram, we do have that in the chat. Um, I think you were on both Instagram and on uh, Facebook, were you not? Thought I was. That. Instagram, there, there tends to be a word count issue. So if you want a little bit more detail, uh, I, I kind of stopped posting the drinks on Instagram because I it was not letting me um, share as much as I wanted to. So I was like, well, we'll save the drinks just for Facebook. So you get a little bit more detail about sometimes music or food on the few occasions that we would try the food and all the drinks, of course, that's all on, on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely get out there, check that out. If you haven't, if you didn't follow along this summer, um, it's well worth going back and checking out his page and following along. Um, like I said, it's a journey of a lifetime, man. Uh, congrats yep. for doing it and congrats for finding a spouse that um, not only put up with it, but was like into it. That's pretty cool. Uh, she was having a ball, you know, she, um, that the, the camping was the trade-off, you know, that was the thing. It's like, we both of course wanted to do that. I was probably more excited about the Tiki personally than she was, but she, she came along and she was very excited. Sometimes it would be a little tired and I'd have to just go, go it alone. But um she, she was a, an awesome co-pilot and a good sport. And she's excited now that we've been back for four months, she's excited to go back out and do it again with, with our next leg. So we'll see where we hit. <laughs> oh, that's, in, that's incredible. So yeah. congrats on the, on an amazing journey. That's, that's, thank incredible. you very much. And thanks for having me. Yeah.